I just want to say that it's a very nice opportunity for me to be here tonight, and I just want to thank you all for uh, letting me talk about the economy and First Federal and how we can work with you. I'd like to uh, start out by uh, sharing a history of First Federal's partnership uh, with the NPBA. We uh, have been proud members and sponsors of the NPBA for 37 years. We have been active in the association as, uh, as board members of the MPBA since it officially began in 1978. And uh, the first treasurer, Steve Doty, actually worked for First Federal at the time. And since then, we have continued on the board, sponsoring events, and been involved in membership activities. Some of the events that we've sponsored include the MPBA Golf Tournament and the Construction Expo. Okay, so tonight we're gonna talk about an economic overview of the Clallam County area, as well as some uh, Washington State and national averages, uh, as well as how First Federal can work with you and your customers to meet those uh, community needs. I'm gonna start by talking about the economic overview. And one of the first things um, we wanna look at is there are six major economic sectors in our area. The first one is the forestry sector, which has seen quite a bit of fluctuation over the past several years, but this continues to be a major part of our local economy. We also have seen uh, the marine trades, which have actually evolved quite a bit over the years, um, over from just traditional fishing to uh, now we're seeing you know, more shipbuilding activity and our marinas. We have two beautiful local marinas, seven busy uh, marine terminals, and uh, one of the last public boat yards on the Northwest. The government sector has seen some uh, cutbacks over the years, but this continues to be a major uh, employer and part of our economy. So we know tourism is a major part of e our economy here, especially in uh, Port Angeles and Squim. And um, some of you may not know that Olympic National Park has been the sixth most visited national park in the United States in 2014, according to the National Park Service. Many of you also probably heard of and maybe even participated in the most recent outdoor magazine competition where Port Angeles was voted second place. And uh, some of you may or may not know that we did actually get a feature article in that magazine even though we did not get first place. So we're being more recognized on the peninsula, which is all very good news. Some of the areas that we're seeing increases in our local economy is uh, the education sector through the Peninsula College and the school districts. We're also seeing a lot of growth in the medical sector through Olympic Medical Centers and uh, additional offices and clinics in Forks, Port Angeles, and Squim. So one of the first things that we look at when we're evaluating the economy, especially in banking, is um, unemployment rates. So what this chart is actually showing uh, is, as usual, you know, column unemployment rates are always a little bit higher than the state and national levels. But we are seeing those decrease over the past few years, especially in 2015. And one of the uh, reasons for this is the retail sales actually increased 6.6% in 2014. And this was attributed to car sales, building material sales, as well as uh, mail order and drugstore sales. In addition, um, we also found that the construction industry saw a large increase in, uh, with an overall increase of 21 billion in taxable retail trade. So quite a bit of activity that we're seeing in these areas. The next thing we're gonna look at is uh, trends in REO, or real estate owned by the bank, also known as foreclosures. And um, this is a geographical map that shows the foreclosure actions to housing units. So the, basically the number of foreclosures by geographic area. And there are some outliers here. You know, the out surrounding areas don't see a lot of foreclosures, probably just due to lesser population. But this is consistent, I think, with what we've seen. There's more foreclosures in the Beaver Forks area due to the lower economy. Port Angeles has a little bit more than Squim. Um, but most importantly, I think this slide is a little bit more telling. 
our foreclosure rates are actually lower in Column County than the state and national levels. One of the next things we look at, particularly to determine um, construction and future development, are the number of uh, lots sold in the area. And this first chart shows that the number of lots sold increased significantly in 2015. And as we look at what those prices were, the price actually dropped or stabilized, which actually caused the average days on market to decrease. So what we're seeing is more frequent sales and more sales volume at a more consistent, reasonable price. So one of the ways that we evaluate developments to date uh, to look at uh, growth or activity is to look at building permits issued. And so here we have the number of permits issued in 2014 and 15 in Port Angeles and Squim. And this includes uh, both uh, new buildings, remodels, roofing jobs, any type of building permit. And what we're seeing here is it's pretty consistent over the last two years in Port Angeles with a slight decrease in the number of permits. But Squim actually has more permits issued. And when we take a look at that and compare it to the actual dollar size of these permits, we can see the jobs are much, much bigger in Port Angeles this year compared to last year and in Squim also. So here are, uh, is a list of some of the things that are going on that we're seeing. The Port of Port Angeles is conducting a remodeling project. Olympic Medical Center recently completed their ER expansion to uh, have a total of 20 ER beds. They also have uh, recently began their office construction project, which is a 42,000 square foot two-story building that um, is going to have a walk-in clinic, a large courtyard, parking for their uh, employees, and it's going to last about 16 months. The Coca Pelli Grill is also expanding into the vacant space uh, adjacent to their current restaurant and filling up that space that's been vacant for quite some time. And Olympic Veterinary Clinic is uh, refurbishing and moving into the space where the old liquor store was on Front Street and occupying that space that's also been vacant for quite a while. Harbor Freight recently came in as a new business. They completed uh, quite a bit of tenant improvements and um, moved in and filled in that vacant space at Port Angeles Plaza as well. Here are some more projects. Uh, CenturyLink has been uh, adding an addition to their building. We have the new Easy Pond and Capital Advance building that's going in on the east side of town where Peking was. The Salvation Army recently completed their uh, project on Peabody Street where they occupied another vacant space and remodeled that to fit their needs. The replacement of the railroad bridge out on uh, the Dungeness Trail is uh, taking place to basically repair the damages that were done during uh, the flood that washed out the bridge. And phase two of the waterfront project between Oak Street and the Valley Creek Estuary was uh, recently completed with a, a new pathway and a beach and landscaping is going to be completed soon. Now I would like to start talking about some of the future development projects that we have coming up. The first one is uh, Composite Recycling Center. Some of you may have heard about this. Uh, this is headed for development at the airport. And uh, the state has predicted that this will provide 111 family wage jobs by the fifth year of operation, 200 jobs by the ninth year, and related enterprises would employ 340 people by the sixth year. Westport has also purchased uh, the vacant Walmart building. This will house their cabinet shop, their engi engineering department, and the administrative staff. They estimate that that will hold about 150 people, and that is in addition to the 160 employees that are located at their waterfront yacht location. The Peninsula Housing Authority is also in the early phases of starting a multi-phase project 
that would basically raise all of the buildings and rebuild them on the Lords and uh, Boulevard location. They would include uh, raising the building for the Boys and Girls Club and rebuilding that on Lords and Boulevard. Uh, that project is um, slated to start in early 2016, but it depends on the availability of funding. The state capital budget has appropriated $58.6 million for Clallam County projects, and um, these include the renovation project for the Guy Cole Convention Center in Squim, also the Allied Health and Early Childhood Development Center. This will be located at Peninsula College. It includes a 41,650 square foot state-of-the-art facility. And a recent groundbreaking uh, began this $25 million project. It is expected to last 18 months. Civic Field is also getting new updated lighting. And the environmental cleanup of the former K-Ply mill site is going to be taking place uh, west of downtown. So as these new um, and existing projects continue and bring jobs to the market, um, we expect to see you know, more people moving to the area. And as a result of that, as we kind of just touched on, um, people will be either buying, renting, remodeling, or um, maybe even building new homes. And um, that's what we're hoping to see. You know, ideally, if, even if some of these jobs aren't coming from local contractors, hopefully they'll at least be spending money here, and that'll drive up our local business as well. Um, and also, just as a side note, uh, I wanna just mention that many newcomers, including some of our own First Federal employees, have had a very difficult time finding three bedroom, two bath rentals and as a result have opted to either purchase, remodel, or buy their own home, which is driving some of these trends we're seeing as well because they can't find a rental. So now I would like to talk about how and where we can help you and your customers fit the needs of the community. We are proud to now pledge our resources in commercial consumer and construction lending through a new special lending program. This is our commitment to assist in expanding small businesses that stimulates economic and job growth throughout our current and future markets. First Federal will, prov will provide this funding to qualified businesses and individuals within our footprint. A significant portion will be dedicated to commercial and industrial lending, such as equipment loans and lines of credit, our goal is to provide the financial tools necessary to assist in increasing productivity, growth, and revenue for our local businesses. So many of you already know that we are very involved in residential mortgage lending. However, some of you may not know about the various types of commercial and commercial construction lending that we have done. And so I'd like to um, provide some examples now of the different types of projects that we've worked on in the past. And they will fit into uh, several of these listed here as well as some that are, uh, are gonna be on the next slide. So we have successfully financed several individual spec homes in the Port Angeles and Squim areas. We are currently in phase one of a five phase, 300 unit master planned community it is located on 46 acres. It is a total of 85 million over the next four to five years. It consists of 121 single family residences, 88 townhomes, 90 multifamily units. There will also be approximately 10,000 square feet in retail space, a six acre village center containing two ponds and a 7,000 square foot community lodge. We have also completed phase one of a three-phase multifamily 55 and older apartment complex in early 2015. The first phase was 54 units, and the total will be two, three buildings, totaling 200 units. This is an example of what we are capable and willing to do for our customers. Some of the other uh, projects that we have completed in 
column in Jefferson counties include uh, the construction of two different medical facilities, two different auto dealerships, and a five-story mixed-use condo building that was constructed by the owner who is also the builder and the developer. We have also successfully financed an assist, as existing assisted living facility, that's a tongue twister, guys, um, um, that was basically had a number of complexities with occupancy, title issues, and et cetera. That one uh, would be an example of a refinance that we were capable of doing. We have also successfully participated with other lenders as needed to fit our customers' needs. And as I mentioned in my introduction, I have uh, been in commercial lending with First Federal for the past eight years, been with them for just over 10 and a half years. And with my bachelor's and my MBA and that background, um, I can help you guys uh, find your business needs and figure out how we can meet those needs and the needs of your customers for commercial lending. And in addition, our uh, credit administrator has at least 10 years of experience and our senior management team each have 30 plus years in experience in commercial, real estate, and equipment lending, mortgage lending, and even consumer lending. And our hands-on management team um, is really invested in making this happen and moving forward. So I just talked about several types of commercial real estate projects uh, that we're capable of doing. Um, and there's multiple other multifamily projects that we've done over the years. We have a very skilled underwriting and monitoring team that can do that. We can finance equipment for the medical trades, marine trades. We can help the forestry and contractors with equipment loans to purchase and re refinance things like trucks and trailers, dozers, excavators, any other type of titled or non-titled equipment. And I'm sorry, I'm just gonna back up for just a second because I left out a, a really important um, thing to mention about our construction lending. So you've seen we can do a lot of different uh, multifamily and commercial real estate projects, but I also wanna point out that we have a full-time construction administrator. Many of you probably know Connie. She's very experienced in real estate and she is there full time to help meet everybody's needs. And we also use Northwest Construction Control, GMC CMI Corp, and uh, Falcon Associates for our plan reviews and its inspections. And what this does is this enables us to streamline when we're doing a commercial construction loan to make sure that all our ducks are, are in a row and Connie's there making sure everything's going on and we have somebody else out doing the inspections for us. So she's on site to help you guys. So another uh, type of CNI or non-real estate loan I want to talk about are operating loans. These are, you know, also called working capital loans. Probably the most common type would be a working capital line of credit, and that can be used to meet your seasonality needs, downsides in your cash flow cycles, to purchase building materials. We can and have done um, lines of credit for many builders in all of those areas. Next, I'm going to talk about what sets us apart in mortgage lending. And the first product is our Smart Start program. This is for the purchase, refinance, or construction of a unique residential property. It is available for owner-occupied family residences or second homes. It is an excellent financing option for properties consisting of small living quarters attached to a garage, cabin style properties, or maybe properties where the building to land ratio is low. This allows borrowers to initially also live on site in a garage or uh, other auxiliary living quarters while their permanent resident is, is under construction. We also have the zero down or low down programs, which is available either through grant funding or is also available for VA loans or the VA refinance program. And probably the most popular or the one that most people are aware of is our all-in-one construction loan program. 
And basically what this is, is it is what it says. You come in, get your construction loan, and it automatically switches to your conventional mortgage without any additional paperwork. So customers pay interest only every month on the principal balance as they, their funds are drawn, usually for the first six to 12 months. And then after that, it switches to their permanent mortgage payments and it, they just keep on going for the next 20 or 30 years until they're done. So as we talked about, we have experts in construction finance and we also streamline the process by underwriting on the front end so that you have a faster closing. We also have been utilizing more and more technology over the years, and uh, I'd like to talk about some of our newest features. The first one is our ITMs, or interactive teller machines. And basically what these are, um, you can come in to the, either the admin drive up or the downtown vestibule that is in front of our downtown branch, and anytime from Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or Saturdays 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can use this machine and interact with a, someone from our operations, our call center, and you can see them, they can see you, and you can interact with them just like you would a normal teller. And outside of those hours, you can use the, the machine just like you would a normal ATM machine. In addition, we just uh, rolled out our business mobile banking for all of our commercial depositors, which is already available for all of our other depositors as well. So how else is First Federal different? We are still the only uh, bank that is headquartered on the Olympic Peninsula. We all have, so therefore, because we're a local bank, we can make local decisions and be more time responsive to your needs. We have a management team and board that understands the community because they are located here and they have a deeply rooted commitment to this community. Our industry and expertise and knowledge of our community at all levels of the staff from our staff levels to management, board of directors and so on. With you, for you, we want you to succeed. So through service, leadership, and strong financial performance, we deliver banking services that support the customer convenience and choice. We put our resources to work strengthening communities and supporting local businesses. And we attract, develop, and retain phenomenal talent who love their jobs and love where they live, just like you guys do. In our commercial department, we have the ability to look at our existing customers' financials and share how we look at those financials. And in some cases, we can um, look at industry trends and help you guys see how you compare to the industry, both nationally and Washington State and so on. So we can help you with that as well. Folks, I don't know, I, I know there's a few people in this room that know how long our relationship with First Federal has been, but we're coming up on, uh, Bill, Raj, 40 years, 76, is that when we started? Somewhere around there? Yeah. So this, this institution is committed to our industry. And I, Garrett, I love what you said. If you have questions, that's one of the reasons that we have our association. We have, hopefully we have some answers or we have some shared information. So I would really like to see us continue to have more open discussion like this. Our next meeting, we're gonna talk about candidates upcoming for a couple of key races. But again, the, the cornerstone here with First Federal, a lot of answers. They've got programs from us for us, excuse me. Larry, thank you very much. Um, you guys did a fantastic job. We look forward to a long uh, and fruitful relationship.